Hey guys, welcome back. It's me in my perfectly symmetrical room. No, I'm just kidding. I'm in my living room slash kitchen slash dining room because I live in an apartment because I'm a millennial. We don't own homes, statistically. Um, how is everyone? I'm doing okay. I needed a couple weeks off because I've been doing interview after interview after interview. If you haven't followed me or seen on my Instagram, I've been doing so many fucking interviews about uh, Pride, Black Lives Matter, about how they're intersectional, um, how I feel about all these trans women being murdered in the past four weeks alone. Um, I say that lightly, but I'm just trying to have a fucking intro. Like, I don't want it to start out somber, but it is fucked and... <sighs> what are we doing about it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, um, let's... We're gonna get into that. Give me one second. Uh, I'm wearing Ronnie on a shirt. This is my bestie, Ronnie. And uh, he'd be happy to know I'm wearing a bra, so he's not touching my breasts directly. <laughs> but um, so there's that. Um, I am also pushing my merch for Drag Queen merch. Look at that. You can get yourself a mug right now. I, I've gotten myself a mug. And I am having, what am I drinking? What am I drinking? What am I drinking? Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice diluted with water because it's a lot of sugar. And so, um, yeah, no, I, I like pineapple juice. It took me a while, but I'm finally on board. Um, not for sexual reasons, thank you very much. Yeah, anyone who's just going there and wants to comment that right now, it's not what I'm doing it for. I am a lone wolf in these streets right now. God damn it, I need more hairspray. We'll deal with that later. You know I do this in one take and one take only. We're not even two minutes in and I have talked so fucking much. What do we want to talk about today? What is our first subject? What is our first subject? Let's talk about how the mainstream media has a huge hand in white supremacy. Okay, I know, let's get heavy. Um, you know what, Never mind. I'll ask, I'll, I'll talk about how I am. Um, the past few weeks I've been trying. Um, I have been really tired, just mentally exhausted, uh, more than normal because I'm used to racism, I'm used to transphobia, I'm used to, these are uneven. Um, I know, I was like, I just saw that, I was like, I'm not symmetrical. Um, what's this face? I'm used to um, being marginalized, I'm used to not getting my day in the sun uh, as far as opportunities go with work, as far as opportunities go with um, just, hell, the dating pool, uh, which is, you know, it's okay, everyone, everyone has it worse somewhere, someone else has it worse somewhere, so I'm not by any means complaining, it's just I am used to a certain level of all of those things and the level, the tides rolling in of racism right now, like the the backlash that I'm seeing from the All Lives Matter crowd and uh, how it's just like Donald Trump literally today came out with his 2020 uh, campaign symbol and it is an almost exact replica of the Nazi symbol. What are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about anymore? Is this real life? I remember learning about um, the Holocaust and thinking, like, I think I was in seventh grade and I was like, how the hell could anyone let this happen? How does this happen? How the fuck did everyone just sit around and let this happen? And now I'm watching how it happens. And I'm like, oh, this was a lot easier than it should have been since we all learned about this the first time. Like first there's kids in cages. Those are the first, the first internment camps. Let's be honest with what they are because the kids keep disappearing. I think they've lost some 3000 kids now, which means they're being sex trafficked. They're being sold into sex trafficking. I, Cannot stress that enough. You don't lose children. Uh, a lot of them have been sexually molested uh, and sexually assaulted while in the camps. And these, this is all proven, like it's, I'm not just making this up, you can go look it up. It's general knowledge at this point that you can go look up in the real press. You can find it in the Associated Press, which is like real news. And so, it just takes everything in me not to scream every morning because I just don't know what the fuck is wrong with this planet. And um, I love how people are like, oh, go back where you came from when I'm from here. And it's just go back where you came from or if you don't like it, you can leave. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere on the planet to go for trans black people. <laughs> like if for me to go be safe, LA was kind of my safest bet. You know, we thought New York was a safe bet, but they stay getting murdered over there. And um, we just had a girl die in LA, I think last week. I think it was last week she was shot down. And um, it's just, I don't, um, there's nowhere I can go to be safe. So you're like, get out of here, get out of our town. I'm like, there's nowhere for me to go. You guys have not made it safe for us anywhere. Like humans are not good to other humans. 
and I have no idea why. I don't want to cause anyone pain on purpose. Do you know how many exes I've apologized to in the past year because I realized I was kind of a monster? More than one. And so, <laughs> let's, I'm just being honest with you guys. Let's be honest, like I wasn't the best. And I think if we can all put our egos aside, you can all realize you're not that great either and see where you need to improve. Like, I'm not immune to racist thoughts. I've had racist thoughts before about other people, not about black people because I understand them. <laughs> but um, but there are still microaggressions that you can experience, like anything. It, oh God, there's so many. Um, like when you, uh, like, okay, so people are always telling me, oh my God, and this is, honey, this is up in, like, I've heard this in January. Like, oh my God, you're black, you're so pretty. I'm like, <laughs> did you just call my entire race ugly because of their skin color and because of our features i'm not pretty in spite of being black i'm gorgeous because i am black my eyes are huge and far apart those are black features pretty much like i, I know a ton of bitches who look just like me most of them are black um like when people say that i'm so pretty i'm like every girl on the east coast in virginia like the dmv area kind of looks like me we're all a bunch of like light brights or they call us light brights or red bones or uh high yellow girls <laughs> um if you go a little further south i've been called a house nigger <laughs> and that is absolutely true black people have called me that in the south they're just like oh you're one of them house niggers all right and i do come from a long line of house house enslaved people yeah i was gonna say because we're not saying slaves anymore we're saying enslaved people because they didn't choose to be slaves they weren't like co-workers they were enslaved by white people white people were evil stole their teeth stole their uh stole their cultures stole their kids and sold them off so let's just you know call it what it is uh we were enslaved people uh but i come from a long line of bedwinches and i had learned that from my great grandmother like uh yeah, like her great grandmother was a bedwinch, and then her mother was a bedwinch, and her mother was a bedwinch. So this color wasn't going anywhere for quite some time because the master is all up and through here. And so people, they want to keep their Confederate monuments up. Honey, I'm a Confederate monument. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm a Confederate monument. If you look me in the eye, you can see the Confederacy and what it did to people. Yeah, like what it did to people. This is what slavery looks like. This is the face of slave rape. And it makes people so uncomfortable because they want the pretty story of, oh, are you mixed? Oh, is which one of your parents is white? Neither of them. Neither of them. My dad is a, a nice mahogany and my mom is this same exact tone, maybe lighter. But um, nothing wrong with that. Black people come in all shades, sizes, shapes, uh, not textures. I don't know. We range from ashy to smooth, but that's a whole lotion issue. That's different. That's different. That's personal. That's whether you have a choice of what you want to do or not. Um, <laughs> I know, whatever, whatever. Uh, everyone's like, what did you just say? I'm like, oh, shut up. I'm allowed to talk about my people. We, we be ashy. I be ashy too. I call it chalky though, because I'm white. Um, I'm black, but I mean like my skin color. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look, you can see my veins. You can see the blue of my veins. And um, I wish you couldn't because, uh, yeah, I rash, I change color in the winter, get a little blue. It's not cute. I'd rather be a little darker. But the grass is always greener on the other side. So we're not even going to get into colorism and what color is better than the other. I am happy with the way I am. I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of my blackness. I'm proud um, of our culture that we've developed from nothing, by the way, because all of our culture was stolen away by white people. We couldn't bring any of our African traditions, any of our clothes, any of our names, any of our religions, any of our dances. And we had, they beat it out of us and we had to be good Christian slaves. And um, we literally, like all the culture that white people steal to this day from rap to crumpin to, to, any, to Oprah, like that's ours. It's literally ours. So we, and we invented it just 400 years ago. Like we had to start our new culture from scratch. And so people love black culture. They hate black people. I do not understand that correlation because you stole our culture and then we made a new one and then you steal this one and then you still want us gone. I'm like, where are you guys going to get culture from if you keep killing us off? I think that's a little weird. Don't you need us for culture? Do it for the culture. Stop killing us, okay? You need us. Otherwise, you're not very cool. I said it. I said it. I know it's so problematic, but I don't care. People have been saying fucked up shit to me for 
my whole life. Like, oh, you're not black enough for this campaign or mm, we're not really hiring black girls right now. And I'm like, okay, so I'm neither uh, in the eyes of the media because I don't fit anywhere and they don't want me to fit anywhere because they don't want you to see what slave rape looks like. They don't want you to see what a mixed future could look like because they're afraid that you're gonna like it. And that's not you per se, because you're my audience. I know you guys get it. But I mean, they're afraid that people are going to like what they see. And so they hide us. And that's why you don't have a lot of black leads that are seen as figures of beauty. That's why you don't see a lot of black girls on runways. That's why you don't, hey, let's call it what it is. And if you do see a black girl on a runway, it's a diversity hire. It's one of two or three out of 47 models. I'm like, that's not what my world looks like. Like if you walk the streets, and this is in New York Fashion Week, you walk the streets in New York, I can't walk one, not one block, I mean one uh, square on the sidewalk without seeing a black person. And they act like our money doesn't matter, but as soon as we stop buying all that shit, they'd, we'd absolutely matter, wouldn't we? Because I, I, black people love to buy shit. I love, I love clothes, I love perfumes, I love fashion, I love high fashion. And they do not speak for us half the time. We're never in the campaigns. There's giant Gucci ads over Sunset right now with like four or five white girls. And um, it's for Gucci Bloom, I said it. And um, I like perfume too. I like perfume, I've got $68, or maybe it's like 112. But um, I've got the, I've got it, like, or I would have it if I was still employed. Okay, this is pre-COVID. What I'm talking about is that this is for years and years, that this, since the beginning of fashion time, this has been happening. We are not included in the conversation. And so there's a big, bullshit call out I'm doing with that because um, I was talking to the Global Fashion Exchange so you can go talk, go check our talk uh, with Hannah um, Holman who is the face of Marc Jacobs Daisy. Uh, dear friend of mine, love her, love her. She's a woke girl, we love her. She's invited to the cookout. But the point is my neighbor's dog, I just heard that. I don't know if you guys heard that but I'm just gonna tell you I don't not hear that. Um, but we had a conversation about all of this, so I won't do a whole recap, but please go watch it. But that was, that's basically it. Like, I belong in fashion just as much as any white girl because my money is green too, and I like fashion too, and I have to fit all the fucking sample sizes just like her. And I can do beauty campaigns too. I think I'm damn pretty. And I know you know I'm pretty, and so you need to hire me for your fucking campaign because I call bullshit every time I go and get picked for something, and I see some ugger as the face of your company. I said it. I said it. I said it. Let's check my notes. Ah, so let's talk about racism in Hollywood. <laughs> this is going to be a heavy one, guys. I'm going to try and speed through this, though. So, um, racism in Hollywood. I, my biggest bullshit meter call out with Hollywood is that they erase us from so many period pieces, like the Marie Antoinette movies, the um, anything with Louis the Fourteenth. They act like black people were invented in like the 1900s. No, we were absolutely there. We were alongside them. We worked alongside them. A really great way to see uh, a good period piece that has diversity in it and has kind of what real life actually looked like um, is The Great on Hulu. Um, I think it's on Hulu Plus, but maybe it's on regular Hulu as well. But it's starring Elle Fanning. And yes, it's got white stars, but it's got a lot of black people and other people of color in it uh, where we aren't just erased from history because we were absolutely there too. And you can see why that we were erased in history. Um, one, because all of your history books are a lie. Everything by McGraw-Hill needs to be burned to the fucking ground. Burn that whole institution to the ground. McGraw-Hill, burn it down. I just said it. I said it on recorded. Burn it down. You guys have been lying about American history since the beginning of your fucking opening because that is not true. Not, not true. Nothing you put in there about black people and slavery is true. Nothing you put about the uh, American Indians is true or the Native Americans. Nothing you wrote is true. You have completely biased it as a bunch of American heroes when they were a bunch of rapists, murderers, and colonizers. And that is a fucking fact. So you can get mad as hell at this video of me saying what the truth is, but that's actually the truth. All you need to do is do a light Google search and see who your ancestors were because mine weren't big old rapists, except for the ones that raped my grandmother and made me look like this. <laughs> so, um, and I do mean like great, great grandmother, not immediate, I am not that old. So don't not do that to me. Um, but where was I going with that? Oh, but so there's a lot of representation in The Great on Hulu Plus, which I really just fucking appreciated. And you can go watch Belle. You're going to have to buy it or rent it. It's on Amazon Prime. It's called Belle. And it's starring uh, a goo goo Sambawetheya. I cannot remember her last second. I cannot. I, I wasn't planning on saying her name. 
anyways, I wouldn't even plan on talking about this, but here we go. Um, and someone's yelling. I don't want to do that. Okay. I'm like, I don't, everyone go back in your homes, go back in your homes, go quarantine. Anyway, watch Belle and, um, they made a big stink. It's about a real heiress who is half black, half white in that time, like the same time as like Marie Antoinette or whatever. Um, you know, a long time ago in merry old England. And she was an heiress because her white dad left her everything, like all of his money, all of his estate. And um, she lived, she had like a happy ending, married a judge, uh, had two sons, but you don't ever hear about her. Why didn't I hear about this fucking black heiress uh, that was filthy fucking rich and called the shots and married a full on judge in like the olden days of England. And it was a big stink because they almost didn't have a painting of her because she's black and uh, in the house where it was her estate. And they were like, oh, are we really gonna have a painting of her? And I'm like, oh my God, they, yeah. They, when they did have black people in paintings, they were always in servitude. And so that was what white people were comfortable with then. And that's what they're still comfortable with now. And that's why they erase us in movies. It's just the same thing now, where we're always maids, we're always uh, gangsters or violent or drug dealers. I don't know anything about that life. I don't know anything about that life. I had a horse growing up. I had a BMW. Um, I lived in a white suburb. We were the only black family there because of redlining. Check yourself. I absolutely know the truth. The only reason my mom even got to see the house. Uh, my mom was looking for houses for a long time when we were moving. I think I was nine or something. And um, she hired real a realtor and then she had another realtor, I think. I think it was, she had two. And none of them showed her houses where she was asking to sh be shown houses. She's like, I want to, I want to look there. Like, oh, you know, oh, that's it's really expensive over there. It's really expensive over there. And she was just like, I, I'm fine. I can, I can look over there. But she was a single black mom with four children, four black children. It doesn't matter how light bright we are. We were still black. They didn't want us in their fucking neighborhoods. And so my mom was dead set on getting into this neighborhood. And so she looked and looked and looked until something came up. Um, and this house had been on the market for quite some time, which means they could have showed her the exact house that she lives in right now that I grew up in. Um, they could have showed it to her the whole time. It was already for sale and nobody was buying it. And so she bought it uh, after she fired her real estate agents because she already was a real estate agent. She said, oh, I can just be my own agent. Go figure, like redlining doesn't work when we have a fucking education. And so now you just get all she did was get a real estate license. I'm just saying, all we, we know what the fuck is going on. And if you look, there's a clause. Uh, it's written in a lot of the original paperwork of these houses in these white suburbs built in the 50s, 40s, 60s or whatever. And uh, it says not to allow black people to live there. Like the black people cannot buy this house. You cannot sell this house to black people. It was to keep black people out. That is literally why suburbs were invented. Don't believe me, look it up. This is all fact. Factity, factity, fact, fact, fact. Arise is smart. Don't forget that. And that's why Hollywood doesn't want to make me famous because I'm too smart <laughs> because I question shit and I know my fucking worth. So anyway, stop erasing us from period pieces. We were fucking there. Stop. Stop. If I see one more all white period piece, I'm turning it the fuck off. I literally didn't watch The Great for a long time because I thought it was going to be an all white period piece. And then my friend Jake told me it wasn't. So thank you, Jake Collins. <sighs> Championing diversity. Okay. So what else did I want to do about that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, I'll, this will be my last thing, I think. I wanna talk about why so many of your mothers and your fathers are afraid of trans women. And I'll talk about why they're not afraid of trans men because of the patriarchy and misogyny. You're always like the haters, haters who do not see us as men and women will always see trans women as women and trans, um, no, trans men as women and then trans uh, men. God damn it, <laughs> just fuck that up so hard. It's okay, because of the patriarchy and misogyny and gener general hateration in the dancery, okay, they're always gonna see trans men as women and they're always gonna see myself, a trans woman, as men. And so they're afraid, they're, they're letting, they, 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 they're starting to get a little more violent towards trans men because they're seeing a shift in the media, they're seeing a shift in society where we're getting accepted and it's suddenly okay to know someone like us where they weren't allowed to know anyone like us because we weren't allowed to be outside. Like our popu population didn't jump from like 300,000 in the census to 1.3 million in just a year because everything was staying the same. No, it's because we weren't afraid to come out anymore. We're not afraid to fill out on a census that I'm transgender. 
we didn't appear from nowhere. We just weren't telling anyone. It's safer to be quiet. Just ask half the trans population. It is safer to be stealth and quiet. <laughs> ah. And so, um, they haven't put a huge, like, they're, trans men are being attacked now, but they haven't habitually been attacked. That used to just be something you saw in, what, not the crying game. Boys don't cry. That's the one. But where, uh, they brutally murdered a trans man in that movie, which was super, super fucking horrible. I would, uh, it's so sad. It's a really sad movie. But Hilary Swank did a great job. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone play a trans man that's not a trans man anymore, but she did a great job for the time, whatever. Um, but the point is, you're afraid of trans women and why they keep murdering trans women is because they see us as men because we're there and when they see us as men they're afraid to be dominated by us because men have been dominating and that means they don't see women as equals you have to think about that too so when you're hating on trans people you kind of you hate women <laughs> you actually just hate women you don't like women because you don't respect trans men as men and so you're treating them like you would a woman and then you don't, uh, you want to kill us because why would any man want to be a woman? Why would you want that? It's horrible. And that is exactly what you're thinking. So when you hate a trans person, I want you to know, we already know what you're thinking in your head. We're not stupid. We've crossed the chessboard of life. I'm legally a different person than the one I started. I know what you're fucking thinking. And I know when I'm getting disrespected. And I, it's what off a duck's back. I don't care. You can write all the hate comments you want. You can come at me any kind of way sideways. I really don't care. I look like this. I live a beautiful life. I appreciate every breath that I fucking take. Um, I survived a fucking pandemic. No, it's not over. But I have survived up until now. Knock on wood. Fuck, I'm not near any. Oh, thank God. My brush handle. Woo! Saved me. Um, <laughs> whew, saved by the brush. Anyway. Superstitious. No, but, um, yeah, you're afraid of being dominated by us. And you're afraid, like, this is the adults in the room, like, the, the older adults. Um, you're afraid that we are going to dominate your sons. We are stopping your legacy dead in its tracks. Like, we are the face of your legacy ending because we are pretty, we're fun, we're funny, we're educated, and we are amazing makeup artists. Look at this. I was a monster this morning. Um, some of you would say I was still a monster now, but you probably support Trump, so that's fine. Um, you can think whatever you want because I've seen what you clap at. I don't care if you boo at me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, you are afraid. Um, I have a note. Yeah, okay, no, I already got it. Yeah, no, we threaten your legacy and we are, um, you're afraid we're gonna fuck your sons. When in reality, we already have, okay? I have dated so many of your sons. <laughs> and they loved me. <laughs> Some of them still call. And um, I could ruin your family with a yes, but I choose not to because... I'm not gonna move into their closet. I'm no one's secret. I'm way too good to be someone's secret. I think it's so funny that I am a world-renowned supermodel. I have been featured in Vogue three or four times. I can't fucking remember because they keep doing it. <laughs> they don't always ask my permission. Someone just shows me. They're like, look, you're in Vogue again. I'm like, oh my goodness. I know. Oh, I deserve that. I deserve that. I have gone through many struggles and they're still killing my people in the street. So at least give me a fucking fashion magazine spread. Anyway for some coverage but um i understand like it's super threatening that like we cannot bear children but guess what some cis women can't bear children um i think it's like i think i can understand the stop of a legacy but let's be real what is your legacy is it a last name or do you own a company do you own land uh do you uh do you have a dowry or something like what oh do you have like a huge estate is your legacy just a last name and a bunch of fucking losers attached to it? I would check your family history first before you talk about your legacy because my legacy is amazing. I come from a long line of people who survived being beaten, whipped and enslaved and raped into a color that's not theirs. And so I love my legacy. I have something to pass on. I have a story to pass on. I have a history to pass on. And um, it's a true history. And uh, it is a brave and honest history full of uh, just the most wonderful people who really just knew a better life was at the end of the tunnel because they didn't just give up. Whereas, you know, what is your legacy? What are you, what are you trying to pass off to your son? 
$100,000 or something. Girl, I could win that on Drag Race. <laughs> For real, like what is your legacy? Is it a shitty last name or do you come from a family full of alcoholics and drug addicts? Because that's a lot of people. If that's your legacy, bitch, I'd be the best thing that ever happened to your fucking family. Think of that. Yeah, you, you let some, and it's funny, it's true. Uh, you let, because uh, you let your son bring home a girl who's cisgender um, and I don't know, doesn't have a job and like has a little bit of a drug problem. Uh, he could date her because she's she was born with a pussy, <laughs> but he can't date me when I have never done drugs. Fun fact, isn't that fun? That's a fun fact. Um, I smoked weed before, I said, chill out, chill out. But I don't say, I don't think weed is a drug, but that's a whole different subject. I think it's a plant that's dried out. Anyway, but um, yeah, I've never done drugs before. I have no arrests. I have a very clean record. I've been featured in Vogue four times. I continuously make world history uh, for trans people and trans black people the world over with my accolades every time I do something new because no one's ever done it before. Uh, I've hosted Pride, uh, LA Pride two times in a row in front of 80,000 people. I, um, I'm a good friend. I'm a good daughter. I am a generous person. I buy things for people all the time just because I want them to have it. And uh, I think I'm a decent advocate. I think I speak out for my people a lot. I think I stand for something. I actually stand for something. I'm not just some bitch taking up space, whereas You'd much rather have that in your son's arms than me. And that's fucking pathetic. It's pathetic and we're laughing at you, bitch. We are laughing at you because I don't feel bad. I'm like, oh man, your son's getting cheated because you're all a bunch of fucking bigots. He could be with a fucking supermodel, but because I wasn't born with a pussy, uh, that none of that, none of my accolades or job descriptions or money is even valid. None of that. I drive around in a Corvette all day and you'd rather have in some bitch who, uh, I won't say anything negative, but some bitch who can't get herself anywhere uh, with a bunch of issues. And I've got my own issues, don't get me wrong, but I think I'd be a serious prize for any of your kids. And I think a lot of my trans sisters would too. I know a lot of accomplished, beautiful, wonderful, hilarious, and intelligent trans women. Um, lots, of trans, lots of them trans women of color. And um, you're all missing out because you're afraid of what we're gonna do to your legacy <laughs> your legacy that's actually fucking trash in my family we call you trash i'm related to a lieutenant governor of virginia my sister is the second lady of virginia my other sister is a captain at delta as a pilot her husband is a captain at united or unless they got bought by someone i don't fucking remember but they're both employed and they're both captain pilot people and then uh, my brother's an office manager for my sister who has her own dental practice and he's a homeowner he owns his own home and he drives a new Lexus. <laughs> so I, these are all just things. These are all monetary things. These are education things. But my family is not something you want anything to do with because I'm trans. Honey, we're laughing at you. <laughs> we're laughing at you. I'm like, I am, I am a fucking prize. Uh, all the trans girls I mentioned, they are fucking prizes. And you don't deserve any prizes. So good luck with your legacy. Good luck with your fucking legacy, whether you get to just spit out babies that don't do shit, that don't accomplish anything, that don't set world records, that don't become senators, that don't become teachers, that don't become shit, because that is exactly what hate will get you. Everyone who's hating right now kind of has shit to show for themselves because who, when you're happy, honey, when you're happy with your life, when you're happy with your legacy that you've had so far, when you're happy with yourself, you don't hate on other people. You just don't, that's a fact. Hold on, I'm gonna brush her. Psh, psh. Yeah, yeah, you just don't. You just don't hate other people. I have met some of the wealthiest people in the world. White people, just kind, just kind, just the nicest people. They're happy with their lives. They've got like kids doing stuff. And I'm talking about when I was working in consignment, I met some really wealthy women uh, in Miami. And I always ask them like, you are so, like they would just be so nice. They'd bring us coffee, me and the other girls at the store. They'd bring us like snacks. They're like, hey, I'm just walking down. And like, you're so joyous. What's like, there's this one woman in particular, I won't mention her name, but I was just like, you're always so happy. How, what is your secret? She's like, well, you know, she's like, I'm, you know, uh, she's like, I'm a wealthy woman. I'm married into money. And, um, you know, I just know what it's like to not have anything. And I just want everyone to be happy. And I, I just love my life so much. And I hope that you're happy. And I hope everything works out for you. And I hope everyone just has a great life. And I just thought that's how everybody needs to fucking live. 
And yes, she became a rich woman, but she just, she could put herself in other people's shoes because she'd been in those shoes, but she shouldn't have to be in those shoes to be able to empathize with people. I've never been in a cage before, but unless it was at the club, but that's way different. But I've never been in a cage before against my will. There we go. And um, I can still empathize with a bunch of children in cages because I wasn't a child in a cage. I was a free bird and I was bullied. I was um, ridiculed. I was uh, ostracized a lot. Like I was made to be and feel alone a lot um, by my peers. Um, but I wasn't in a cage and I don't know who I would be if I was, had that added circumstance. And um, we've got to address that Donald Trump is a cancer to this country and he is ruining everything. Um, but we can come out on this clean on the other side, like Andy Dufresne. Some of you will get that reference, some of you won't, but it's okay, I'll let you do your own movie research. But um, we can come out clean on the other side if we stick to our guns, we have to keep protesting. We have to let Black Lives Matter not disappear out of our timeline. It has to be a constant thing. Like Instagram, Facebook, they have to be vehicles to spread the word on human, just human rights. <laughs> human, basic civil human rights of like just voting with everyone, earning what you earned or earning what you worked for uh, and being on a level playing field as everyone else. And also reparations. We deserve fucking reparations. Everyone got a head start but us. You owe us for 450 fucking years because you owe us for the past year as well. You owe us for all of it, literally all of it because I've never been treated fairly. I've never been paid fairly. I've never been um, like not in Hollywood, not in fashion. No, I have had a racist transphobic bullshit happen to me since the beginning of time, the beginning of my time. And so, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Comment below if you are too. If you have also been mar like made to feel like less than when you were completely qualified for all the jobs that you were up for. Um, and not like they didn't pick you because it wasn't the right time, but because they said to you, to your face, oh, we're not doing the trans thing this season. Happened to me all the time. All the time. Does it still happen to me? I think the earliest it's happened to me was maybe February, but um, which is this year, 2020. But people have said that shit to my face. They're like, oh, um, we're gonna wait until June. And then, you know, we're gonna look at you again. Like, come back in June, you know, during Pride Month and then we'll hire you. And I'm like, I'm trans year round. My bills are due year round and you can't, okay, cool, cool, cool. And I've been saving their names for the revolution and it's coming. So if you ever fucked me over or wronged me, you best believe you about to get canceled, bitch. <laughs> You gotta get canceled. But anyways, it's 32 minutes long. I gotta go, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I think I looked gorgeous this whole video. Um, please buy my merch at dragqueenmerch.com. Please say hi to Ronnie for me. Go slide his DMs. Um, let him know that I was here. God, my bangs are falling because I'm starting to sweat in here because I don't have the AC on because I don't want you to hear it while I'm on the thing. Because then it's like, and then I'm fighting this whole sound thing. But okay, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I absolutely love you and stuff. Um, I'm putting my Venmo below, I'm putting my Cash App below, and I'm putting Drag Queen merch link below. And I think that's all I need to put below. But yeah, do your research. Black Lives Matter. What up, bitch? That's what's up. Thanks. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Oh, link, subscribe, uh, swipe up, something. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Comment. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. I haven't done this in like a month. God, give me a fucking break, y'all. I'm sweating. Bye.